Dr. Wang, and thank you to the CCG for the invitation to contribute to the book and also to the debate today. And allow me to start uh, with quoting uh, a dear Egyptian colleague, Mohammed El Badri, uh, who was speaking about uh, uh, who made whom in whose image and so on, and the impossibility of change in molding a country in the image of another. Since I belong to the, to the half of the humanity that was not even created in an image, but from a rib of a man, I can tell you that that, uh, how to say, uh, I do not have that impetus to change somebody so much, uh, very well developed. So, second, I'm also represented a small European country, a small European country, which by the definition is on the margins of power. When you are on the margins of power, and sometimes you are at the center, sometimes and hopefully not too often, of the geopolitical conflict, then you really look to the world and to the issues from a different perspective. When speaking that I'm coming from uh, Slovenia, uh, that means also that my, uh, my country uh, came into existence after uh, former Federal Republic of Yugoslavia ceased to exist. And you might remember there were wars war in Europe in the 90s and in the war that is happening now on European soil in Ukraine. I can also, that might be interesting for the Chinese participants, the consulate of Slovenia in Kharkov on the so-called Freedom Square was destroyed and luckily there were no, uh, no victims because um, during that, uh, the, the destruction or the bombing. So. But uh, while I completely agree, I also agree, uh, uh, Ambassador of Malaysia, who also, you know, uh, voiced the opinion that, you know, who can speak in whose name and whether that is appropriate and how the uh, international order should be more inclusive, that the voices should be heard, that different perspectives should be heard. I very much agree with that. But on the other side, what we are also speaking, when we are speaking about the international order, we are not speaking, we are not speaking just about the centuries, how the, the, the states somehow, or the essence, how the countries through the centuries of wars, peace, etc., somehow molded their, their relations. But we are really speaking about international law and the principles that we all agree about. One of those principles is the sovereignty, the territor uh, territorial integrity, and that is blatantly violated. So when we speak about the war uh, in Ukraine, we also speak about the UN Charter and the principles of UN Charter. Uh, we, we speak about the wide, wide consensus, and at the same time, uh, I would say also, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, speakers before me already mentioned the role of China, the China being P5 member, being a major country, being a global economic power. That is why the, the eyes of the world are turned towards Beijing. And I do think that the Beijing does understand, and that is the principle that is always stated, the sovereignty, the equality of sovereign states and territorial invaluability but to stop what is happening now, shared responsibility, as Basil said, and shared work needs to be achieved to stop the bloodshed now. Um, and frankly, I also wanted to echo what you mentioned, Dr. Wang, and it's truly so why there is a particular place for Beijing today, because it has a solid partnership with Russia on one side and with Ukraine on one side. I think that just last year you celebrated China and Ukraine celebrated 10 years of bilateral partnership agreement. It is important. And that is why, uh, that is why the eyes of the world are actually directed towards China. Thank you. Thank you.